Ah, oh, chummer, you're just not paying attention if you think you can do it all yourself. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den, with me, your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire, here to keep talking about 5th Edition Shadowrun. And today, we're going to talk about an aspect of character creation that admittedly had kind of slipped my mind as I got all excited about role-playing out as Mr. Johnson and giving details about the world that we could all start diving into with, well, Shadowrun. And that was Contacts. Contacts are an important aspect of character creation because they generate some NPCs, a little bit of character history for your characters. Not only that, but it gives the your DM some tools for putting together this game. Uh, it gives them a couple of NPCs to start with and gets you really thinking more about the world that you're in and where your kind of social history ended up landing. But before we get into all of that, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there and hit that subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or, if you're already part of such a legendary roster of people, then go on down, hit the like button, and share the video far and wide to spread the good word and help us grow ever further and farther. But now, let's go ahead and talk about Shadowrun's contacts. So, when it comes to making your contacts, you have two stats to really worry about, and that's connection and loyalty. Now, connection is how much influence a contact has in the shadows and the world at large. A connection of one or two represents a pretty minimal influence, while three and four is more middling, but they're still able to pull a few favors, get a few puppets dancing on their strings, and actually start to make things happen for you. Whereas if you go higher than that, you've got a contact with the connections and influence necessary to move a lot of paperwork, move a lot of material, or just get flat out get things done on your behalf. And then you have loyalty. And loyalty is how actually helpful a contact is and how far they're willing to go to help. A score of a one or a two is purely a business relationship. Uh, they will take a look at things in terms of what kind of value they get out of helping you. While a higher number indicates a level of friendship and or mutual respect, uh, the better this goes, the more loyal they are to you and the less they'll be able to be influenced by other factors. For example, if you're on the run from Lone Star, their detectives are hot on your heels and they come by your contact's place and they have a fairly low loyalty, They'll just look at it purely as a business relationship. How much are you worth? Are you worth covering for? Are you going to be able to generate the kind of business and new yen necessary to make it worth uh, tangling with Lone Star? Whereas if you're at a four, they might be willing to go, yeah, maybe, yeah, I know the guy, but I haven't seen him in a while. I mean, I'd, I'll let you know if I see anything. Just flat out lie to them. Now... Again, the better this gets, the further they will go and the more they're willing to bend backwards to help you. Now, it's important to note, though, that at character creation, when you're generating your contacts, you use karma to create these contacts and set up their connection and loyalty ratings. The higher you go, the more it will cost. So it might be worthwhile to consider spreading around your... Uh, karma between a couple of different contacts, especially if you need to have a certain amount of, uh, well, skills to help shore up any gaps in your character creation. I mean, really, uh, there's all kinds of services that you will need. Uh, information or even work from time to time might come up. And these contacts might be Characters like Cyberdocs, pe people who are able to patch you up after a job or install or remove damaged cyberware and give you new stuff. These could be lieutenants in organized crime who are able to drop you tidbits of information now and then or even help land you a couple of jobs to get you started and generate a little bit of new yen. Then there's free spirits, which are, well, spirit, uh, spirit creatures that are uh, able to give you information about the world at large that uh, may not necessarily be normally visible to mor mortal non-magic user eyes, but is still nonetheless relevant and important. Then you also have gun runners, which is fairly obvious why they would be useful for a group living out on the fringes conducting legally gray jobs. 
or you could t have a friend that's a mage who runs an apothecary, or a decker that excels at gathering and selling information. After all, if you come across pay data on one of your jobs, do you know who to sell it to? No. But this decker, this, uh, this data monger, they're going to know exactly who is going to want to pay for that, and probably about how much, and thus, you'll get a cut of the profits. Then there's also Lone Star detectives and officers who might be able to drop you tips on a particular case you might have been hired to work. Or even just give you a line like, hey, we're after you now, man, you need to, get, you need to start booking it and cut bait and run. Another kind of contact to consider that may not always be the obvious thing up front but is sort of no duh once it's pointed out, you might consider a criminal defense lawyer. Now. Are you going to be able to afford the most expensive criminal defense lawyer in the world? Probably not, but if you have a good connection rating with one that's got a decent amount of influence, well, then that's a lawyer who's going to know who to bribe, who to pay off, who and what loopholes to exploit in order to reduce your sentence or even get you off scot-free. But what do you think? Go on down into the comments below. Do, do you feel I've covered contacts fairly well? I think I have. It's a quick general gist and overview, and really these do a lot to flesh out your character. They do as much as uh, fleshing out your character as they do give your DM some tools with which to work. But let me know your thoughts down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Did you like today's video? Hit the like or dislike button and let's engage in, in the discussion down below. And if you haven't done so already, go on down and hit that subscribe button. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.